most recent definition of educational technology is the study and ethical practice of facilitating learning and improving performance by creating, using, and managing appropriate technological processes and resources. But this is a tentative definition, subject to further re-examination over time. It explores the process of analyzing, designing, developing, implementing, and evaluating the instructional world and learning materials to improve teaching and learning. Like clay, a product of the continuous weathering of the Earth's surface, technology is an ever-changing product. Both are very tactile and transformative. Both are malleable and easily manipulated into other forms. Likewise, digital technology is what we use to mold and shape data by asking questions of it and engaging in activities. Since primitive times, humans have had a close relationship with clay due to its many uses, such as cooking pots, bricks, art, and even musical instruments. One of the earliest forms of communication was clay writing tablets. Sumerians and Babylonians used this method to communicate for over 3,000 years in 15 different languages. Each group had their own clay tablet libraries. We've come a long way since the days of carving pictures on rock walls. Today, most students carry several portable technological devices with them at any given time. Throughout history, technology has continuously pushed the boundaries of education to new heights. So what's the purpose? The purpose of educational technology is defined as facilitating learning and improving performance. These dual purposes are, after all, the reason we focus on technology. This is a change from the 1963 definition, which described educational technology as controlling the learning process. This is significant and declares that learning needs to be less controlled and more self-directed. This concept of facilitating learning rather than controlling it includes all learning, even informal learning. The classroom is certainly not the only place that learning is facilitated through technology. Informal learning occurs daily through lived experiences outside of formal educational settings. For instance, in the prehistoric era, clay quickly became a life necessity as it was often used for medicinal purposes. There are indications that the earliest humans mixed water with different types of mud to cure and soothe wounds and irritations. It is theorized that they learned this from watching animals instinctively use minerals for such purposes. This idea gave way to clay being used to treat other ailments, such as food poisoning, aches and pains, infections, and mineral deficiencies. They even turned to clay for spa and beauty treatments. It is said that Cleopatra applied a mud face mask twice a week to cleanse her skin. The current EdTech definition also places an emphasis on improving performance. This asserts that technology should not be used simply because it has become the norm. Instead, technology should be used to improve learning, not to control it rather the learning experience to drive the design and use of the technology. When clay is wet with the proper amount of water, it forms a cohesive mass that retains its shape when molded, known as plasticity. Add high heat and the clay partially melts, resulting in ceramic. When clay is used for sculpting, sometimes other tools are added, such as an armature, which helps the clay model support its own weight. By using technology, we seek to improve teaching and learning methods, thus improving the performance of the end user. In order to achieve this, a solid foundation must exist, and as with any good foundation, a lot of tailoring is required. When building a brick foundation, every detail must be perfect. The base properly compacted, the framework set up right, the bricks free of voids. In educational technology, ethics is the foundation of the field. It is, by definition, an ethical practice and has clear guidelines set in place to ensure consistent and standardized ethical principles each one a clay brick that requires precision and accuracy in its placement in that foundation. Commitment to the individual, commitment to society, and commitment to the profession. Neglect one of these and the most carefully fabricated foundation will crumble. Deprived of a code of professional ethics, any profession is vulnerable to a slow corrosion as professionals in that field will develop unspoken standards, resulting in conflict of interest and values. So how do we do all of this? by creating, using, and managing. Creation refers to the research theory and practice that's used in different settings, using various design approaches, and includes an assortment of activities that can range from aesthetic, scientific, psychological, procedural, or systematic, each of which can be used to produce materials and conditions for effective learning. Consider the versatility of clay. It's easy to work with, and the ideal modeling material for a beginner or a seasoned sculptor. With nothing more than a block of clay, an artist can begin the journey of creativity, shaping it into many styles. Like clay, EdTech has been influenced by technology of the time and what could be done with it. 
From the days of using instructional technologies such as blackboards to overhead projectors, films, and mainframe computers, to the advent of personal computers, the internet, and the growth of broadband communication, today's focus is on how instructional technologies can best serve learning. New media such as virtual worlds, gaming environments, blogs, wikis, iPods, and MP3 files and players constantly tempt educators to use them because they are among trends driving our global economy. Just as a field of clay touched by the genius of man becomes a castle, these tools harness the wisdom of the crowd, enable a shared culture of fandom and commentary to be developed, and takes edtech to a new level. Using educational technology is based on theories and practices. It begins with the selection of appropriate processes and resources, methods, and materials. Why selection is based on materials evaluation to determine if existing resources are suitable for a particular audience and purpose. The learner uses the technology source after instruction and guidance. When a technology is new or unfamiliar, it may be tested prior to the learner being exposed to it. Technology is integrated into curriculum when an instructor incorporates the resource in an articulated fashion. The diffusion process happens when a transformation occurs in the training processes. For example, an instructor changes from a traditional classroom setting to an online teaching environment. Cognitive development is the idea of differentiation and integration. The cognitive development theory is reinforced by utilizing audiovisual media to elevate the learning process. Edgar Dale argued that the sensory experience had a significant impact on permanent learning. In the behaviors theory, Skinner's theory specified that behaviors were learned when they were followed by reinforcers. Learners should be treated as individuals with an awareness of individual positive reinforcement. Behaviorist theory centers around each learner being independent entities instead of one of many. The cognitivist perspective emphasizes the importance of the learner's mental and emotional processes during the course of instruction. The application of the cognitivist perspective allows the learner to read material and then spend time pondering the data. Managing technology is one of the first responsibilities of educational technology. Managerial functions incorporate directing audiovisual centers, mastering project management skills, and delivery system management as in distance education. Technological processes are used to design, develop, and implement resources for learning. The input process output method is commonly used to explain the processes of educational technology. Technological processes aid the learner in moving from a learning space to a performance space. The major stages of instructional system design is explained in five major stages using the ADDI model. A for analysis, D for design, D for development, I for implementation, and finally E for evaluation. Instructional system design models provide communication tools to determine, one, appropriate outcomes, two, collecting data, three, analyzing data, and four, generating learning strategies. The following is considered technological resources, materials, devices, people, tools, and settings. While there is an emphasis on the use of new digital resources to phase out analog resources, instructors will still default to traditional media. Technology resources require the selection of appropriate resources. Hardware and software are selected based on suitability and compatibility with educational goals. In 1971, Association for Educational Communication and Technology, AECT, was named from the previous organization, Department of Audiovisual Instruction, DAVI. Educational technology is resource driven. James D. Finn explains that in order to be a professional, one must effectively embrace technology. Finn states six components to moving toward a technology mindset. 
In his second component, he declares it is necessary to have a technology, which is a process and a way of thinking. Educational technology is commonly related to the audiovisual elements included in instruction. Educators frequently become complacent in the use of the technology in which they are the most familiar. Contemporary educators are required to incorporate educational media and many facets of instruction with the use of technologies that are unfamiliar to them. If, as a profession, within education, we are to control the new technology, we must realize and live with this fundamental fact of cultural change. Molding an educator into accepting technology is like molding clay from an ordinary bowl to a teapot. It goes beyond styling the clay into a pot. It requires shaping that includes a handle and a spout with a lid for practical use. The new shape adds components not yet utilized. Education is not simply studying and taking exams. There is a desire to uncover life's mysteries. Improving human performance expands outside of the walls of a classroom. It is the idea of using the knowledge obtained and applying it to real life setting. Through these means, learners become doers with knowledge better connected to performance beyond the classroom setting. Learners obtain more information when it is related to something they understand. When teachers incorporate new resources into their curricular plans, this is referred to as integration. In a systems approach, the design team would also take responsibility for change management, taking steps at each phase of development to ensure that stakeholders and end users accept, support, and use the final product. Teachers in education must appropriately integrate clay into their learning goals. If they do not define how they will use and integrate it into their lessons, they will likely have students or end users working with clay inappropriately or have students not sure what to do with the resource in front of them. As Bynum and Harrell 2018 so eloquently put it, in preparing students to be college and career ready, technology integration is imperative. Successful student use of technology in education hinges on knowing how to manage technology efficiently and overcoming barriers that come with integrating technology. Eisenberg and Jacobson Weaver state that when it comes to educational technology, most researchers have specific technology in mind. In the same vein, these researchers tend to have a specific goal in mind as well. Hence, the design of educational technology for a classroom should have a specific technology and goal in mind to better enhance the classroom for the student. We can say the same about our metaphor of clay. For example, in a pottery class, if the person who is using the clay does not have a goal, then it is likely the clay will not fully develop into anything that enhances the final product. Educational technologies development should focus on expansion for the field. Alleman, Shaoqing, and Li, 2015, believe that the development of educational technology requires changes in infrastructure and policy. As we take a closer look at educational technology, we can refer to the metaphor that educational technology is like clay. It is malleable and evolves over time. When left untouched, it can harden and crumble. However, like that of the development of educational technology, one must continue to handle the clay to ensure its uses are still relevant for the greater purpose. Hence, by continually using the clay and caring for it over time, the clay will continue to prove useful. When it comes to the utilization, we must make practical and effective use of educational technology. Ibrahim 2017 states that learners changed from being a passive receiver of information to being an active agent in the educational process. Therefore, the utilization of educational technology must allow students to be active learners. If we look at clay in an occupational therapy setting, we gain a better understanding of how its utilization aligns with educational technology. In occupational therapy, clay is used as an active way for patients to work their muscles to enhance muscle memory, aiding in recovery. Like the utilization of educational technology, clay is used practically and effectively to promote active participation by the user. The management of educational technology is the process by which educational technology is planned and organized to enable its use in the classroom to be streamlined. When one thinks of management, often we think of our bosses who oversee running daily processes to ensure that businesses run effectively and efficiently. The management of educational technology is similar in that teachers are the ones who are successfully supervising and directing the educational technology.
Like management of educational technology, an art teacher manages clay in the classroom by supervising and guiding students to use it appropriately and to ensure that the outcome has benefited the student's skills and knowledge. The evaluation of educational technology should take a close look at how the integration of the technological processes and hardware usage within the classroom. Oliver 2000 states that evaluation put simply is the process by which people make value judgments about things. In the context of learning technology, these judgments usually concern the educational value of innovations or the pragmatics of introducing novel teaching techniques and resources. In the art classroom, after the clay has been formed and kiln dried, the instructor must evaluate the student's works of art. Throughout the process of building a project, clay and educational technology are rated and judged. As educational technology is ever-changing, diligent research must be done before and after using technology in the classroom. Roblier and Nizek, 2003, believe that future research must address squarely the question of why teachers should use technology-based methods. The emerging theory based demands that studies look at technology not as delivery systems, but as components of solutions to educational problems, and that research questions be stated in a way that contributions of methods can be examined and tested. Educational technology incorporated in today's classrooms must be vetted before and after use to ensure that the technology is suitable for the users. The way that this is done is through thorough research. By using qualitative and quantitative analyses, researchers and teacher researchers can determine the effectiveness of educational technology. David Rothery, 2019, states that clay minerals cannot form unless there is water available by weathering of mineral grains chemically attacked by water. Recursively coming back to the idea that clay is a metaphor for educational technology, researchers must be the water that is constantly testing the crystalline structure of clay. Without that constant interaction, clay cannot exist. Similar, similarly, without the constant interaction between research and technological hardware and software, educational technology cannot exist. Like clay, educational technology takes on many forms. It is malleable, composed of many different components, but is unique enough to require specialized structures to work efficiently. Educational technology cannot be defined by its physical characteristics alone. One must also take into consideration the intangible characteristics, like the processes and societal impacts. As the technology boom of our society continues to grow and change, so too will the definition of educational technology.